This is the most cost-effective portable battery that I'm aware of, price to capacity. It has 2 kilowatt hour of capacity, the maximum output of 2600 watts, but it can go up to 3900 watts thanks to a really cool feature. We can charge it from the wall outlet up to 2300 watts via the car DC outlet or even through solar panels, whether portable solar panels or even fixed solar, up to a maximum of 1000 watts. Let's go and now I'm connected via the adapter XT62, a classic solar panel right over here. Now, as long as we respect uh, what's on this spec list, which is 12 volts to 60 volts, 20 amps, 1000 watts, we are okay. This is five and seven minutes, so almost the end of the day. This is a 320 watt solar panel. I'm just connected uh, with one single panel at this moment. I would charge the battery, the rest of the battery in 3.3 hours. I've got two panels connected, two of these, which is the maximum, although each only have 320 watts and we can go up to a maximum of 1000 watts and we are with 660 but we have to respect the voltage and the amperage so on the voltage i'm connected via parallel with the xt60 adapter that comes with the battery so i'm not increasing the voltage but i am increasing the amperage so at this moment i am with the maximum of 20 amps using these two solar panels 5 12 in the afternoon 330 watts from uh, two solar panels each 320 but these are solar panels that have inclination zero so as you know they should be inclined in a 35 degrees but this array that i've got right over here is completely flat on my pergola impressive and we will do further tests on these solar panels during different times of the day because i'm really really curious to see how it will handle the panels so far really great and as we can see we reduced by half it has a really cool app that we can install on our phone either android or ios and it will show us the charging discharging and settings along with a lot of more info and it costs only i will leave the link down below but it's a crazy price having in mind that it has two kilowatt hour of capacity and one thing that surprised me as well is for the capacity the size that this battery has which is very very similar to other batteries that we have tested with roughly half the capacity really really awesome this is the blue yeti elite 200 v2 it has 2073 watt hour of capacity more or less two kilowatt hour 2600 watts of output power which is a lot to connect our solar panels and we can go up to 1000 watts which is awesome 12 volts to 60 volts then a car lightning dc output 12 volt 10 amps then we have the dc uh, button here to turn on dc the AC right over here. We have USB type C, USB type C to 100 watts, USB type A and USB type A 15 watts. And then here on this side there's only the ground, also the AC input which we will connect in just a few moments and also the circuit protection. We can go up to a maximum of 100 watts on each of the USB type C ports. At this moment I've got a ENU a power bank and also a MacBook Pro. MacBook Pro is reaching roughly 80 watts watts of power while the power bank is on the 65 more or less so we are on the average of 140 150 watts of a total capacity of 100 plus 100 so total 200 when we have two devices connected of course this will depend on the devices that we connect it can output 2600 watts on ac but with power lifting which is really cool it can go up to 3900 watts this moment i've got the power lifting on and i've got a microwave connected i also have a toaster and a hair fryer so totally we are talking about 3000 and 900 watts more or less right over here but with the power lifting if we take a look i can just switch on the microwave at this moment is drawing roughly 1500 now if i put on the air fryer we will reach 2500 uh, more or less where we should be able to reach 3000 which is not happening so it's balancing and now if i put on the toaster it will also reach the 2500 so it's balancing all of the um, devices here now if i turn off the toaster 
it will give more power to the microwave and more power to the air fryer but still on the 2500 now if I switch off the air fryer we will go to 1500 on the microwave more or less at this moment 1400 but it reaches 1500 maximum it's just finished right now and if i check on the air fryer individually we can see that it will go 1500 so only this one plus this one would be a total of 3000 plus this one 3900 but that's not what we are seeing we are seeing right over here some kind of magic which is balancing the power between these three devices so we can have a boost and this is really really interesting I'm going to deactivate power lifting and right now it's going to be used as normal so if i press the microwave to start there we go 1500 in a few moments there we go 1400 now if we go to the air fryer it will go to the 3000 and three, no no 2800 but we are above the 2600 and it holds and it holds i was testing this before for my portuguese audience and it holds but if i press the toaster right over here we will jump to 3500 and then it will go down actually it's not 3500 it is more or less 3900 so it is quite a lot the power lifting mode is really cool and it's awesome if we have devices with resistive loads like we have a heater water heater a toaster or similar devices such as those we will be able to load up to 3900 watts and then the battery will balance those loads it will lower output that it will send to each of those devices and it will balance on the 2600 watts and this might be really handy if we are boiling water for example and we need to heat up something really quickly on the microwaves or on the air fryer in certain circumstances we don't need to choose what we are going to connect because it will balance the loads and really enjoyed that feature and although it's rated at 2600 watts there were a lot of times that i was about 2800 2850 watts and it was handling just fine without any issues and then of course it shuts down as a protection but if we need to power a device that has a peak then it's totally fine one of the ways of taking full advantage of a portable battery is to use a portable solar panel So at this moment with the panels completely flat 200 watt a portable panel and we are getting roughly 130 watts of power this is 430 more or less so the sun is a bit down already but for a 200 watts and at this moment completely flat we are reaching 130 not bad at all but we can get better now just change the angle to the maximum that we can reach which is above 45 and we are reaching 157 160 which is really cool so almost the maximum at this moment 430 still and with this inclination right over here we can reach almost the maximum of the panels right over there really impressive for this setup which is a complete portable setup and we are reaching 160 watts at this hour. Really, really awesome. Now, the app is really simple. We can install it in Android or iOS. It shows detailed info like the input or output power, AC and DC output levels, how much is coming from solar or from the grid. We can turn off the battery remotely, though you can't turn it back on from the app. For safety, it even warns us. I did really enjoy that touch. We can also toggle AC DC outputs and check stats like remaining runtime and energy usage. And on the settings, we can change the UPS mode. For example, there are four options charging mode, which we have seen, power lifting, the echo mode, which will shut off unused AC or DC output to save energy. And we will be able to choose from one hour to four hours. And then on the advanced options, there are a few more options that we have including the firmware updates that are updated through Bluetooth. Now in the past we have used a Blue Yeti battery
battery, which was quite loud. Actually, not the battery itself, but the power adapter. If I plug in just the power adapter, this is really not cool. It's not even plugged in to the unit yet. This one right over here, the Elite 200 V2. Wow. So at this moment, I'm monitoring my solar system, not connected to this particular battery at this moment. I'm drawing zero from the grid. I have my solar panels at this moment, um, outputting 3,800 watts, and I'm consuming here 2,200, and I'm still charging one of the batteries that I've got on my main system with 600 watts. Now we are at full power in terms of the AC. This is the turbo mode. You have been like this for a few minutes now. I don't hear fans ramping up more than this, which is really cool. This is the, I would say, a really low noise. We changed the uh, turbo mode to silent. Let's press OK. It's immediate. So one of the questions that I had was, how much time does it um, take to change between turbo and silent mode, not on the input power, but on the noise. And as you could see, the fans automatically just woof, vanished, like they disappeared. The same way, well, not exactly the same way, they're starting slowly and they will ramp up and get back to what we were listening before but at this moment full power on the ac which is more or less 2300 watts so in about 0 0.6 hours we will have the 2073 watt hour uh, capacity on this battery fully charged and i can take it anywhere with me with a really large capacity which is awesome and this is the sound that we can get on the standard mode it's less than half of what we had on the turbo mode so it's not completely silent i can hear something but it, it's really really low on standard mode at the moment of the recording i will leave the link down below but just checking out the prices is something crazy for two kilowatt hour capacity i will leave the link for amazon and for the official blue yeti website but on both we will be able to purchase more or less at the same price a bit cheaper on the blue yeti website awesome to see that blue yeti was able to pack all of this power two kilowatt hour in this small form factor and at a great price as an option we can also choose the solar panel which is a portable solar panel and we already know that they are more expensive than the classic solar panels that we have but in certain scenarios where we don't have a power outlet we don't have any other source to charge the battery then a portable solar panel might be a bit more expensive but it will give us power that we need when we don't have any other choice. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. If you still have any questions regarding the Blue Yeti Elite 200 V2, leave them down below because I will be doing more tests and I will be sharing with you. And if you have some questions that I can answer via testing out and then sharing, that would be great. That being said, my name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.